Alright, today I'm going to be talking about Kabamba. Um, so, first off, they are a invasive species to the, the northern U.S., even part of the southern U.S. Um, they're actually an invasive species in a lot of places because they grow extremely fast, they self-seed, um, and they just take over entire lakes. So, this plant has three main subspecies or actually species, or I don't know what you would call it, but three main species. Uh, Cabamba persilarima, which is what I have right here. It's the purple Cabamba. Um, purple meaning really dark green. Doesn't really get purple. Um, Cabamba forgato, which is the red, almost orange color. Uh, Cabamba. And then Cabamba caroliniana, uh, which is the light green Cabamba that's almost... A light green like that. So, um, basically all three Kabambas are very similar. Um, they, they take something, ooh, wow, I have to show all that off. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a crap ton of bubbles coming off of that. Alright, maybe not. Alright, but, um, so, all three Kabambas need a certain few things to survive. They're very, very picky plants. If they find what they like, they will grow super speed, and I'm talking almost an inch a day. If they don't find what they like, they'll melt, like, like literally in a few days. Like, they'll fall apart. Um, and they make a big mess when they fall apart. So, I think this plant's a little bit overlooked um, for that reason, that if you can't get it to like your tank, It'll make a huge mess, but if you can get it to grow, a lot of fish appreciate it. Fish, I'm talking like baby fish. I'm talking angels. Angels love this stuff. You can see they just go in and out of these plants. Um, it's like a forest for them, and they can just go right through it because they're so thin. So um, they appreciate CO2. They really like CO2. They really like high light, but mainly what they like is a full spectrum of light. Um, I'm talking 2700K bulb and then get a 6500K bulb and run them both at the same time and you'll see, like I don't know if you can see up there how that part's red, that part's blue, it's because of the different um, Kelvin color temperature bulbs. They like a full spectrum of light. So if you can get them a 2700K and a uh, uh, 6500K bulb, they're going to appreciate it. They're really going to appreciate it. Um, I'm not completely sure why, but they really, really, really seem to enjoy the full spectrum of light. Um, so, uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, right. So, when you know your plant's healthy, um, you're going to get these side shoots, these roots. You can see those, kind of. Um, and then you're going to get a top bud. And what you really want to look for is these side shoot roots um, coming off uh, the stem that's actually above the gravel or substrate, in my case, dirt. Um, because what this is going to show is this is going to show that it's starting to process nutrients in the water. Meaning, you can cut it right where all this stuff is right here. I would cut right at the bottom. Cut right there. So that could be one piece right here. The second piece, I would rip off a few leaves on the bottom and then plant that piece. And these roots will actually help to feed that plant for a little while. So you can kind of just, again, you can cut it. Now, my plant aren't, isn't fully established, so I don't know that there's roots below the gravel yet, um, which I want. So I would cut right... Where's my finger on here? Right there. And I would cut right there once the plant got established. And then I would pluck off a few bottom leaves over here, plant that stem, pluck off a few bottom leaves over here by the roots, pluck and uh, cut that, and then plant all three. Um, so I'm going to end up with three. Now, this leftover stem is going to take a while to restart again, but it should because it has roots now. Um, and then this other stem, same deal. Um, 
So the main thing with this plant to show that it's established and growing well is roots. Um, if you see roots coming off this plant in any way, you know it's growing, you know it's healthy, you're not going to have an issue growing it. Um, on the other hand, if you don't see roots, you see kind of straggly growth, it's going to melt and it's going to fall apart in your tank, and I would say just get it out of there as fast as possible before it does. Um, as you can see, now I put this plant in here like five days ago, and hold on, i got to find here, okay, so that plant was the size of this, and in five days it grew up to here. So, um, this plant grows ridiculously fast. Um, we're talking close to an inch a day, I think I said that already. Um, great for babies, great for scatter egg layers, because they'll just drop eggs all over it. Uh, scatter egg layers like him, Mr. Diamond Tetra, Dominant Diamond Tetra. Um... So yeah, um, I think that's really it about Kabamba. Oh, right, so the, the, the methods the methods of growth, I completely forgot about this. So to spread, to reproduce, this plant will grow to the top of your tank and will start producing flowers like mad. Um, the flowers can then be pollinated, seeds will be produced, the, pro uh, the produced seeds will sink, and then they'll either start growing after a month, or what you could do is you could actually take the flower off freeze the flower or stick it in the uh like add water and then stick it in the refrigerator for a few months and then throw it back into another tank and they will all germinate into new kabamba plants isn't that cool so uh that's how they reproduce in the wild um and that's why they're so abundant at reproducing and you can actually just save the seeds for as long as you want they're ger i believe they're they're uh germination time it's about seven years. You have about seven years to replant. I could be wrong. So um, that's how you would preserve it if that was something you'd want to do. And uh, that's kind of it. I mean, that's Kabamba.